Aloha. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Holman. I'm the director here of the U.S. Department of Commerce's U.S. Commercial Service. We help Hawaii companies do business internationally, as well as all of the partners here that you're going to hear from today. Welcome to the 2018 High Step kickoff event. We're really thrilled to see so many people here and interested in the program. We have a lot of exciting activities and resources available to help you grow your business internationally in 2018. Real quick, I'm just curious, show of hands, how many of you have participated in the High Step program sometime in the past? Okay, looks like about half here in the room. And how many, this is the first time that you're doing anything related to the High Step program? Show of hands. Great. Well, we're thrilled to see so many of you come back to learn what's new in 2018 and a lot of new faces so that you can leverage these resources to grow your business. Now, the STEP program began seven years ago. 2018 will be the seventh year of the program. And what you may not know is that all of the states and territories across the country have to compete for this pot of funds. They develop a proposal and the programs that are part of the STEP program and then compete for these funds. Congress puts aside one pot of funds, all the states compete and territories. So what that means is that all of the programs nationwide vary by state and territory. And the state of Hawaii in this case is on the hook to generate a return on investment on those funds. Show Congress that the programs that we're making available to you are generating a return and therefore will ensure some future funding. Now, in this competitive environment, we know Hawaii is a small state, right? Sometimes we feel that Hawaii might be under leveraged, but when it comes to the STEP program, I, I just wanna share with you some numbers. Hawaii, as we know, from a population standpoint, is ranked number 40 in the country. 41 of you include Puerto Rico. When it comes to the STEP program, Hawaii, just in dollar terms, is ranked number 10 nationally. Thanks to DBED and all the partners that you're gonna hear from today who've made what I think is one of the best programs in the nation, 10th in the nation in terms of dollar, dollars brought in via the STEP program. Now when you factor that out in a per capita basis, Hawaii is number two in the nation of all the states nationally to bring in funds to help small businesses like yours grow internationally. So let's just give DBED and all the partners a round of applause for their hard work to make this program a success. All right, now I'd like to call up our SBA District Director, Jane Sawyer, and she's gonna share with you a few words from the Small Business Administration. Please join me in welcoming Jane Sawyer. Thank you, John. Okay. All right, if we can bring it to the right level here. Good morning, everyone, aloha. aloha. So uh, I think uh, I'm happy that John was able to share some of those statistics with you and let you know the importance and the impact that this program has. I mean, it's another place where Hawaii is getting some respect on the national scene because this program has grown so strong and we've had such a great response from our small business community. So some of you are new, some of you are repeat customers, um, and that's what we want to see. We want to see our small businesses involved with this program in expanding their export markets. Um, High Step, we've been successful since we built this program together, and, and it's a significant amount of funding that SBA is able to get to Hawaii through this program. And it's the results that you produce every year that enables us to continue to bring those resources to Hawaii to help the ongoing process of getting more people involved with exporting, to help you be exposed to more markets, to expand based on what you go and you learn at these trade shows because that experience is one of the most beneficial. You meet buyers, you gain more contacts. They tell you about what their customer needs are. Through this program, we brought coffee and chocolate and honey and hot sauce, tons of hot sauce to Japan and other places around the globe. And your products can become part of that mix of products or services. Um, even you know the fellow who's selling those tons of um, hot sauce to Japan markets, started selling them chips, and they decided they liked that Kilauea Fire hot sauce 
equally as well, if not more so. So he kind of shifted his strategy and he brought another product to market. So that can happen with you as well. If you get in these classes, you learn about your markets, you explore different markets. That's what the, uh, the STEP program, High Step, is, you know, is all about. We can also help you with those efforts because SBA not only funds a portion of the STEP program here in Hawaii, but we also work with individual customers to help you get the funding after you start exporting or as you start exporting to grow. SBA has special loans, exporting loans, with a higher percentage guarantee than some of our other loans. So that Export Express loan, the international trade loans, and other exporting tools to help you finance individual transactions, to help you develop and ways to expand. You need a bigger plant, you need a warehouse, you need money for inventory. Those are all things that SBA can help you with. So we're not just sending you out there to learn how to export. We want to be able to help you uh, with your financing for these projects and help you build and grow um, toward bigger successes across, across the board. So there are lots of ways that we can help. We also will supplement a lot of the high step training with SBA meetings and SBA programs. We welcome you to join us for all of those, but definitely tap into these resources that are available through the high step program because you're gonna see growth in your export sales, you're going to see growth in um, your competitiveness, not only in your export markets, but right here at home with your other customers. So thank you all for being here. We encourage you to stick with it. There'll be a lot of information and maybe some things you haven't considered with your business, but it's on, on the pathway to realizing your dreams and building a stronger business and supporting Hawaii's economy. So thank you. And congratulations for being here. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate those words. All right, next up, our main event for today, I'd like to introduce our good friends and colleagues at the State of Hawaii Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, or DBED, as we like to affectionately call them. And everyone in a blue shirt here today, if you look around the room, is wearing a DBED shirt. So if you have any questions of DBED about the programs or some of the initiatives that are coming out, feel free to grab someone in a blue shirt, get their business card. Now I'd like to introduce from DBED, Mark Ritchie and Jamie Lum, who are the program managers for the High Step program. And Jamie is the mastermind architect of Hawaii's program. So let's give them a loud round of applause. Thank you, thank you, John. Aloha and good morning, everyone. Aloha. So yes, uh, those of us in the blue shirts our uh, DBED team, um, you'll see Lyle, Marlene, Julie, Tim, Dennis is back there, and uh, Mark and myself. We're not a bowling team. We're <laughs> we, we, we do our work for DBED, and we just welcome all of you, and we're really excited to see so many people here. Um, and we're glad to see so many new faces, too, because we really, really want this program to benefit as many of our Hawaii small businesses as possible. So John's already given you a lot of the background. Um, we are the recipients and we work with all of the partners you see listed here and you'll hear from uh, each one of them a little bit later to put together our Hawaii State Trade Expansion Program or what we call High Step. Um, we've been fortunate to receive monies from the SBA for the last few years and um, we're just really grateful and, um, and so we are glad that you all all here to uh, hear more about it. Uh, some of you have been part of it for a number of years, so um, it might be a repeat for you, but we do wanna um, tell you a little bit more about it. So our High Step program, um, next slide, Rob, please, um, really consists of three integrated parts. Um, we have our High Step Export Readiness Training, uh, Export Readiness Program, which involves training and which involves business advising. Uh, we're really putting a lot of emphasis on that this year because we have a lot of great partners with a lot of experience, um, be it just business in general 
or exporting specifically, and we really want our companies to be able to tap into all of that expertise. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more ab about that, about each of these components. But anyway, so the first component is really the foundation for exporting is our export readiness program. The second uh, program we have is our Hawaii Pavilions, where we uh, we purchase booth space in particular trade shows where we think uh, Hawaii companies can benefit and uh, we recruit companies to be a part of that. So we subsidize uh, most of the cost of that. So we'll, we'll talk about that. And then the last part is our um, high step company assistance, which actually uh, is funding. It's on a competitive basis that you can apply for to help you uh, implement part of your export development strategy. Next slide, please. So to get into the high step uh, export readiness program just a little bit more, it's a series of training seminars. Uh, we have seven scheduled so far this year, and we do have a flyer out front, as well as um, our website, which is invest.hawaii.gov. Don't forget that. Invest.hawaii.gov under the exporting tab is where, where you will find all of the information on the high step program. So we have a flyer out front. It uh, has all of the sessions that we're going to do uh, this year between January and June. <coughs> Next year, I'm sorry, 2018. These sessions are all live streamed so that uh, our um, uh, all of our fellow um, uh, companies on the neighbor islands can participate either through live streaming or uh, Doug here who does a great job for us um, does videotape each session which we put onto our website as well as HPEX website and can be viewed you know later at your convenience so these sessions are uh, either topic specific or country specific but they are designed to help you um, with your e eventually if you don't have an export strategy to put one together, or if you have one, maybe fine tune it a bit. So we have uh, those sessions. Uh, they're all scheduled to be here at the Foreign Trade Zone. So, um, and you can go to our website to sign up. We usually open up registration about a month prior. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, we do have them scheduled. There, there is going to be a change already, <laughs> just to let you know, because we have two sessions in March. Those are going to flip, just to let you know. So we have the scaling up operations scheduled for March 8th. That's going to move to the 29th, and the e-commerce is going to move to the 8th. So just keep that in mind. But just always check our, our website. We'll always keep that information updated. Um, as we said, this is a foundational program. So even for those who have been exporting, you might find that there are um, you know, trends or just certain, um, certain issues that maybe you never encountered before that might, um, might be brought to light in some of these sessions. So take a look at them. Um, as I said, they're designed to help you with your putting together your export development strategy. So that's going to be important, uh, especially coming into the company assistance program, um, which Mark will talk about a little later. Okay. And then our um, Hawaii pavilions, we do have uh, several of those scheduled. Uh, we also have another flyer for that, and you can also find that on our website. Uh, we actually have the first one coming up in January, which is the Surf Expo. Um, and uh, then we have uh, the Bio International Convention in June with the Hongkyu Hawaii Fair in Osaka in July, Outdoor Retailer in July, and the Tokyo International Gift Show, which is in September. So um, again, what we do is we purchase booth space. We do go out and recruit companies uh, to participate. There is a small participation fee. However, we feel that it's very affordable compared to what you would pay for uh, a booth and all of the furniture and fixtures and everything, electricity and carpeting that you need to put into your booth uh, to be able to exhibit at a trade show. So, um, but a lot of it is just all being under the Hawaii umbrella, the Hawaii brand, and we find that that's very powerful going into these shows. So um, we encourage you to take a look at that uh, for the, the shows that do fit your product or your service. Um, we will be contacting, uh, when you fill out the high step 
application which is online and you indicate you're interested in a Hawaii pavilion, then uh, each of the program managers, and we, we all here um, um, kind of just uh, take turns in organizing different events. So whoever is the program manager for that pavilion will contact those companies that have expressed interest as we get closer to the show and we start you know, getting into the uh, nitty gritty planning. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you? I know we do have a, a short video that we want to show you on the Tokyo International Gift Show. Uh, it is probably, it, well, it is by far the largest show that we do. Last year we had, uh, or I should say this last show, September of this year, we had 70 companies um, participate. And um, it's just a, a, a huge, huge show. It's been a good show for a lot of our companies. And so anyway, we'll, we just want to show a little, um, little bit of that. I don't think there's a building this size in all of the state of Hawaii and it's packed full of people and exhibitors so if you can imagine uh, what it must be like over the course of three days, anywhere between three to four hundred thousand people are going to be walking through these halls, and we hope that you know, even if a fraction of them come over to see some some of the things that we have in Hawaii, uh, it, it'll be great for for all of our vendors and all of our all of our state. It is really important as a small designer. We are one of the things is for us to get our products into some of the local stores in Hawaii, but to expand to Japan, where they absolutely love. The Hawaii products, they love anything that is made from Hawaii. So that's why it's important for me to be here. They're very curious about what we've got going on in Aloha Elixir. They're very um, inquisitive. Um, people, uh, people are going away and coming back after reading some of the material and kind of rediscovering um, what we're about. So it's a, it's a very good door opener for us to be here at the Tokyo Gift Show. Well, that just gives you a little bit of a taste of, of that particular show and how our Hawaii pavilions work. Um, I, I also uh, want to point out the flyer that we have on the front table that has a list of the Hawaii pavilions on one side. On the other side, we actually do have a list of the shows that um, our partners at the Department of Agriculture are organizing as well, because so many of you um, also are interested in those shows. Um, so we wanted to help them promote, and Yukashi will come up in a few minutes and talk a little bit, but we also wanted to help them promote the shows that they do, because they do it in the same way, where they bring Hawaii companies together under the Hawaii umbrella and so forth. Um, I think that's all. I think I pass it on to Mark now. Okay. Well, next slide. Great, thank you, Jamie. Uh, I've been asked to talk about sort of the third component of the, the High Step uh, program, and that's the company assistance uh, part of that. Um, we've talked a little bit about, you know, sort of the training, the business advising, and uh, the pavilions that we do, but we know there's a lot of companies that maybe are not appropriate for some of the pavilions we're doing. We do just a limited number of those. And also other uh, areas that uh, companies need assistance in their export development uh, plans. So the uh, high step company assistance programs that assist individual Hawaii companies uh, with their export market development costs. Uh, we, it's a little bit clunky, but we have to sort of do this assistance program through an RFP, which means, and it's already been posted, and basically you give us a proposal or an application, and those are due uh, towards the end of uh, January. And here's the website here uh, that you can go to, and it's also on the DBED website to go and then download uh, that, uh, that, uh, propo that uh, RFP. Um, so one of the requirements we're sort of looking at this year is that really this program, it's, uh, you can request between $3,000 and $7,500. It's not a whole lot of money, but what it's designed to do is incentivize companies that are already sort of have an export development plan to perhaps, let's say, start looking at maybe another market like Korea or something. Let's say they're already in the Japan market. Um, and, uh, and so we have a sort of a minimum of like, looking at a revenue of like $200,000 for, for a company because we think that given the way that the program is structured, uh, 
that companies need to have the resources to really fully implement an export development plan. And we are also, I think as John Holman said, from the SBA, we're looking at ROI. So if we give you so much money to help with some of your export development costs, we're sort of expecting uh, an increase in your exports. Uh, next slide, please. And so what can you use this money for? You can use it for airfare to, to fly to a foreign country. Uh, remember that it's kind of the Fly America Act, you have to use a U.S. airline, or it has to be code. It, you can fly, fly a foreign airline, but if it's code shared and you're buying it through an American airline, you can do that. Uh, you can pay for trade show booth rental or trade mission participation fee. Uh, you can pay for the trade show build out for a maximum of $3,000. You can pay, it can pay for the shipping of products to the trade show in return. And you could also use the gold key service. Uh, and uh, that'd be something John Holman, if you want to uh, talk to him about that, that the foreign commercial service offers where they put a complete sort of program together for you, introducing you to buyers and, and things in a, in a target market. <coughs> Uh, next slide, please. You can also pay for localization services for collateral materials and websites. So you can use up to $3,000 to, let's say you're going into the Japan market or you're already there and you need to uh, localize your website. In other words, put it in the Japanese language or your brochures and things. Uh, fees for shipping sample products for a maximum of $2,000. And then also we can, you can spend up to $2,000 on cost of compliance testing an existing product for entry into a market. And we know Japan, and we're going to have a whole Japan session, that, that that's very important to have those certifications and things, particularly if you're a food product company, but also a lot of other companies too. And then the last thing you can spend it on is what we call sort of export research tool subscription. Like The Economist uh, has subscription things where they look at target markets and you can go in and, and uh, take advantage of a bunch of research and things that they've done. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, so our success metrics for High Step, and then Jamie can probably join me on this as well, and this is for the overall program with the training, business advising, pavilions, and then the individual assistance program. We're really looking at expanded exports and revenue uh, from exports of Hawaii produced goods and services. Let me just talk about services for one minute because sometimes there's some confusion on that. So far we've just been talking about sort of hard products that you actually ship, put in a box, but this program can also be used for selling services overseas. And what does that mean? So an example of that would be, let's say, uh, an environmental uh, 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 design company or an architectural company where you have a foreign client or a buyer, let's say somebody in Japan, but it's your firm here in Hawaii that is doing all most of the work and the designs, and so you're employing people in Hawaii, but that end product is going to a place overseas, and then revenue is coming in from that place overseas, so that counts as an export. We are not talking about just business services to exporters, but we're talking about that sale being to a foreign entity of some sort but then the work really, most of the work taking place here in Hawaii. We understand that you know, there's installs and you know, things that have to happen overseas, but uh, primarily most of the stuff should be actually done in, in uh, Hawaii in, in uh, putting that together. Um, so number two, success metrics, a larger overall number and a larger percentage of Hawaii-based companies that are active in global markets. And then lastly, a penetration of new markets for Hawaii-produced uh, goods and services. We know everybody looks at Japan and things, and a lot of our stuff is geared towards that, but we also are very interested in trying to help companies go further afield into other markets uh, in Asia or Canada, Europe, and other parts of the world, maybe Latin America even. Um, did you want to talk about the eligibility, Jamie? Okay, so to be eligible for uh, use of any of the high step programs, uh, you need to meet the federal requirements um, of what they call an eligible small business concern, which basically means that, you, um, that you're organized or incorporated in the United States and operating in the United States, um, that you meet the SBA st size standards for a small business, and I don't think that there are really very many um, companies in Hawaii that don't meet it, so uh, you have to be in operation for at least a year. 
And, um, and the last thing, and this is a self-certification form that you have to sign. So when you sign up, we ask you, there are two SBA forms that we ask you to sign. One is this eligibility form. It's a self-certification that you meet all these requirements. The last thing that they list on there is that you have sufficient resources to be able to export. So it's a self-certification. The, the second SBA form we ask you to sign is uh, the number two there is that you're not barred from accepting any federal funds. So. Um, those are the two requirements for the SBA. So, so the, the other requirements that we have, which you should be able to meet if you're in business, is that you're registered and in good standing with the Department of um, um, Commerce and Consumer Affairs, which is business registration, and that you have a general excise tax license. Um, next slide, please. I think that's it. Okay. So, um, so you're eligible, and so what do you do? You go to our website, invest.hawaii.gov, and um, under the exporting tab, under high step, there is an online application. Please fill that out. Um, it is different from last, uh, what we've done in the past. We, we used to have a separate online um, Hawaii Pavilion application, but as I stated earlier, what we really, really want to do is get a good profile of the companies that are coming into the program, and we really want to encourage companies to uh, at least take the initial consultation with um, Joe Burns and his people at the Small Business Development Center so, you can, so we can gauge where, where you're at and if there are any particular um, areas that, that maybe you didn't think of before in your business, be it, be it just the, the business itself or in your exporting, and then we can help direct you to all of our uh, partners, uh, like I said, that have expertise in various areas. Um, and then once you fill that out, you'll be contacted, as I mentioned before, if you are interested in a Hawaii Pavilion, you will uh, check off which ones you're interested in, and then we'll generate a, a prospect list from that and be contacting you as we get closer to those, um, those events. For the company assistance, uh, that is a separate application. So uh, Mark showed you the link. It takes you to the State Procurement Office website. Uh, which um, once you open up that page, then you have to actually download that PDF form. So uh, that's a separate process, as Mark already mentioned. It's a request for proposal. So there are certain, it follows our Hawaii procurement code. So um, that is uh, that. And I think, um, I think that's it. Um, next slide, I think, just has our, um, our contact information. Mark and I have our cards out there. Uh, we're gonna hold the questions till the end so that we have our, uh, a chance for all of our partners to, to speak, to talk a little bit about their organizations and, and um, how they fit into the program and, and what they have to offer. So thank you all very much for your attention. Is there anything else, uh, Mark? That uh, no, I might have... Okay, we'll, we'll be around till the end. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Jamie, appreciate that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do kind of a quick roundup of all the key partners in the High Step program. And they're gonna share with you a little bit about their organization, how they're supporting the program this year and the resources they have available for your business. I'll go ahead and start off. As I mentioned at the top, my name is John Holman. I'm the director here of the U.S. Department of Commerce U.S. Commercial Service Office. My office is one of 250 offices in 80 countries around the world. And what we do is we help U.S. companies sell their products and services in markets around the globe. So we help you figure out what markets to target, provide you with market intelligence, help you to find pre-screened qualified buyers, navigate customs, logistics, all those key elements of finding new business overseas and growing your business in international markets. And so my organization, my office is supporting the High Step program, but you're certainly welcome to come to us anytime you need assistance with your international business, anytime you have questions. One thing that Mark mentioned that I just want to share with you, one of our most popular core services is called the Gold Key Service, and this is a matchmaking service that you can use High Step funds for if you like to do that. The Gold Key is kind of like a personalized trade mission for you. 
what you do is you come to us, come to me and say, I'm really interested in the Australia market. I've done my research. I have some interest from Australia. And what we'll do is we'll contact my colleagues at the U.S. Embassy in Australia or consulates, depending on what part of the country we're targeting. We'll tell them about your business, what type of partners you're looking for, whether it's a distribution partner, whether you're looking to sell direct to retail stores, maybe you're looking to find an agent in country to represent your business, you tell us who you're looking for. My colleagues will then go out, find contacts that meet those criteria, tell them about your business. We may send over product samples. And then those that are interested and we've pre-qualified, we arrange one-to-one -one meetings for you and those partners. And so that can be a very effective mechanism for finding quality contacts in country. It gives you immediate credibility in the country because you're working with the U.S. government. It also tends to shake out less legitimate partners in the country and gives you a leg up. We arrange the venue, transportation, translator if necessary. All you need to do is show up and everything is set up for you. That's called the gold key service. We have a number of other services as well to help you perform background checks on prospective partners, to build up your e-commerce platform for international sales. Uh, we can do single events promoting your business at a trade show or maybe a networking reception. We can put something together for you. A whole range of things, but that's just a quick summary of the U.S. commercial service and how we can help you. And I'll be around afterwards if you want to come grab my card and I'll also be participating in the High Step program this year. Next up, I'd like to call on uh, Mr. Joe Burns, who is the director of the Small Business Development Center here on Oahu, and he's going to tell us about his role and the SBDC's role in the High Step program. Please join me in welcoming Joe Burns. Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, Mark, Jamie, Jane, everyone else who's made this program really, really successful over the last few years. So I'm going to keep this really, really brief. Uh, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center is a resource partner of the SBA and what we do is provide technical assistance to companies on an individual basis to maintain their success or help them achieve success in business if they're not already successful or if they're maybe a startup. So we've been doing that, uh, we're going into our 28th year in Hawaii so we have a pretty good track record and some good experience. and very, very good people on our staff that work with companies on this one-on-one -on -one basis. So within the context of the High Step program, there's just two points that I want to make this morning. And the first one is that Jamie already alluded to it, and that is that when you register, you're going to be hearing from us. And we're going to talk to you about where you are in your exporting effort, and then direct you to the right resources within the, the program. So you can expect uh, a call from us is, you know, fairly soon after you, after you register. And then the second point that I want to make is something that Jane alluded to, which is the export financing that's provided by the SBA. And either some really, really, really good loans that we can help provide technical assistance for your company to be able to become approved for these loans. So it's great that you, know, you have your product and you have your marketing and you've figured everything out, you know your customer, and then they place this huge order and you cannot pay your labor or buy your materials because you don't have enough money. So export financing is obviously a key part of any export effort. And uh, before I end, I would just uh, give you an example. A couple years ago, there was a program, uh, there was a company, I'm sorry, there was a company that was moving to a newer facility and they were getting ready to gear up their manufacturing for exporting and they ran into some program, some, some problems with the local banks and we were able to step in, help them uh, do a, an export plan for them and ultimately they got their money. We can't promise that for everyone, but we can certainly make a good effort for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. The SBDC plays a key role in the High Step program, and I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing from Joe and his team. Next up, I'd like to introduce the chair of the Hawaii Pacific Export Council, Ms. Brenda Foster. Brenda. 
Thank you, John, very much. And I'd also like to thank all of our partners here, and spe uh, specifically SBA and DBED, for uh, including HPEC uh, in this program. For those of you who may not know, uh, HPEC is a nonprofit organization, but we are 30 professional, uh, international professional business executives or ec and or exporters who are federally appointed by the U.S. Uh, Commerce Secretary. And we volunteer our services to help all of you really work on being able to export, work on your business plans, look for resources, and guide you from all of the experience that most of us have had overseas. Our real goal is in mentoring uh, the companies that come to us, helping to increase uh, local exports, whether they be products or services, and also, and most importantly, to support the activities of the U.S. Commerce Department and the Export Assistance Center here uh, that John is the head of. Uh, also, our secretariat, as I will call it, is located in John's office. And we go through a series of programs and things that we do each year. You have a list, I believe, in front of you when you checked in, the programs that we'll be doing this year. But we also did about 13 programs last year, and they're included in our library of programs that is on HPEC's website and I believe DBED's website also, where last year we went into much more detail on logistics and marketing, finance, uh, we also did a series of programs uh, on various uh, countries. We did Canada. We also did uh, Japan. Uh, but this year, we want to go a little bit differently. And we, as you will see by the programs listed, we really want to look at where the future is in a lot of exporting. And a lot of that is in the e-commerce and marketing sectors, and also being able to help you scale up your services. Uh, for those of you who have checked in, we also have brochures uh, that are out at the front table. We have brochures here in the front, and we'll be happy to help you. And we're looking forward uh, to having uh, Joe's offices refer you to us. We will see you once you've started to work on your export business plans, uh, not your first business plan, but the export business plans. And from there, we'll take you through our series of resources and things that we have in country. So with that, I'd like to turn it back to John. And uh, thank you very much, and we're looking forward to seeing all of you. And we want to help you grow your business. Thank you, Brenda. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Mr. Rob Hack, who's sitting up here behind the computer. Uh, Rob is our program manager for the Hawaii Pacific Export Council, and you'll see Rob at all of the seminars. He run, helps to organize and put on those seminars. He also has a wealth of international business expertise, so you'll get to know Rob through the program. He also serves as one of our export mentors, so thank you, Rob. Yes, Brenda. Uh, Oh, that's right. The uh, Hawaii Pacific Export Council nonprofit was just recognized in Washington, D.C. a few weeks ago as the District Export Council of the Year. There are 60 decks nationwide, and Hawaii's deck is number one in the nation. So thanks to all the support from the partners and many of the programs that we've been able to put on. Our next partner leads a double life. Not only is he the administrator of the foreign trade zone that we're here in today, but he also is a member of the Screen Actors Guild and has appeared in Hawaii Five-O 30 times. <laughs> Mr. David Sakink. Thank you, John. No pressure there, huh? <laughs> All right, I just want to say thank you for all, all of you coming out today. This is a great opportunity for you to grow your business. Uh, and all of our partners here are here to help you out, and so anything we can do to provide that, uh, we'll certainly be here to do that. Uh, as John said, I am the administrator of the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone, and that is this facility here at Pier 2. Essentially what we are is a cost, a cost offset program. So what that allows you to do is bring in imported goods, work with them in a bonded state, and then either declare them at the time you bring them in for our consumption, either here in Hawaii or uh, on the mainland, or if you ship them out to an ex uh, ex export, as an export, out to a foreign port, you never pay the duties and taxes on it. So it's a great cost savings program for you. So that's the, the key or the essential part of what a foreign trade zone is. What we do also, and this is the, the nice part about it, is provide this facility for people here at Pier 2. 
We not only have warehousing services, but we are the hub of international trade. And what that means is that we brought all of these people who do international trade together in one area. So you're not going all over town trying to look for or find somebody to help you out. It's all done right here. We have our partners like U.S. Commercial Services who have their uh, facility right here uh, at our facility, right across the street, SBA, um, you know, all, all within just a close walking distance of this Pier 2 facility. The other thing is we offer a space like this for training, uh, like here at this, uh, this uh, conference center. It's a training room for people to learn how to do international business. Uh, and as well as that, uh, we're talking about some of the other people that we have at our facility. We have customs brokers, shipping agents, logistics people, anybody that you need in terms of finding that key uh, element to get you to further your business or to move ahead, uh, we have that here at our facility. And so uh, we here at, at Pier 2 and the uh, Foreign Trade Zone are here to help. We've got our partners that are here to help. Uh, and uh, anything you need, just give us a call, you know, talk to us afterwards, and we'll certainly be able to help you out. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Next up, I'd like to call on our partner from Innovate Hawaii, Mr. Wayne Inoue. Oh, Mr. Wayne L. They're pointing at each other. There's two Waynes. And uh, okay, Wayne Inoue coming down from Innovate Hawaii, one of our partners in the High Step program. He's going to share with us a little bit about his organization, how they support High Step. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, again, my name is Wayne Inoue, my colleague Wayne Layugan. You got two Waynes in the room this morning. Um, but again, we're from Innovate Hawaii. We're a federal program um, to support the Made in America project. So we're a federal program yet under the Department of Commerce. And Innovate Hawaii is the, the program for the state of Hawaii. And what we do here in, um, in Hawaii, and you know, we provide services for manufacturers. But for this specific program, we, we run a workshop called um, Growing Your Business. But actually, it's not your business. It's actually your product. So how many of you actually saw that one commercial on TV that says, there's this young couple, and they opened this letter, and they said, she got in, right? And a little bit after they go, she got in, right? So it's similar to this, right? You get your PO from this international company, you go, wow, I got a PO, now what? Right, so we're gonna bring this down to a level that really talks about your product, right? Do you have your supply chain? Do you have your workforce? Do you have your packaging? Do you have your legal nutritional stuff? So that's what we're gonna try and help you as manufacturers to really think about before you even start to think about exporting, right? So we're gonna ask you the hard questions. Are you really ready for exporting, right? So that's, that's kind of what we kind of work with a lot of the manufacturers here um, locally. But one of the other things we do is we administer the state program. We have a manufacturing grant program which is a grant program that will give you 20 up to 20% back of any expenses that you do with equipment purchase, OEM training on the equipment, energy efficiency, or feasibility for expansion for your production. So if you have done any of those investments since uh, July 2015, you will be able to qualify for or apply for a manufacturing grant. It's a state grant. It's your tax money that actually helps put this together for you as a manufacturer. So my colleague Wayne in, um, in the back is the, the program manager for the grant. Um, go talk to him if you have any questions about the grant, but you can look us up on innovatehawaii.com and you can get more information about it. So again, looking forward to working with you. And again, you know, the, the thing that you need to take away from this is, are you ready for exporting? Not from a business standpoint, but from a product standpoint, right? Making sure that your product is ready because Again, first, um, first time exporting is difficult. So you just want to make sure that you're ready, um, where your product is ready. Not you, but is your product ready. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And I encourage you to look up on uh, Hawaii Pacific Export Council's YouTube channel where all of the seminars are uploaded. Wayne gave a fantastic presentation last year on scaling up your business. We're going to do that program again, but we're going to enhance it this year. It's going to be different. So keep an eye out for that and check out his video online as well. Next up, I'd like to introduce from the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, Ms. Yukashi Smith. Come on down, Yukashi. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. 
from Hawaii Department of Agriculture, HDOA, myself and Hideki Yamane right there, are here today to explain about our uh, project. So um, I'm gonna talk about these trade shows. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for printing this. Um, Hawaii Department of Agriculture is gonna be organizing Hawaii Pavilion at four uh, international trade shows and domestic shows listed in this brochure. Um, so this is uh, separate from Hawaii Pavilion, Hawaii Step program that DBET is organizing. This is uh, funded by HDOA's funding. So, but we will uh, encourage all the participants to apply Hawaii Step company assistance program, a direct finance assistance program to cover your marketing costs because this trade show participation requires travel to the show venue, shipping samples and um, interpreters and those uh, other costs. So let's talk about um, HDO shows, Food X Japan and International Food Ingredients and Additives Expo. Two trade shows to be held in Japan. Which show would you like to go? So if you are food pack if you are food manufacturer and packaged products ready to sell in the retail or serve to the food service, you should go to the food X. But if you are um, ingredients uh, producer such as flavor um, and ingredients for the bakery, uh, powder, uh, spices, then you should go to the International Food Ingredients Additive Show. And we have two domestic shows, National Restaurant Association, uh, National Restaurant Association Food Show in Chicago in May, and Produce Marketing Association Fresh Summit, Orlando, Florida. Two domestic shows, those are eligible to apply and include your proposal uh, to the Hawaii State Company Assistance Program because certain numbers of foreign buyers are coming to this show. So um, last year I went to the Chicago show, NRA show. Uh, there are 500 Japanese delegation was brought in by ATO Tokyo Japan, that's Agricultural Trade Office. Also 600 Chinese delegation came to this show as well. And um, and our show is for the food service uh, and produce marketing association is for the fresh producers. And how do you apply? Go to our website, hdoa.hawaii.gov and addmd. This is the uh, online application. You can submit uh, your intention to participate in these trade shows. We also listed some USADA sponsored show, but USADA is um, Western United States Agricultural Trade Association that HDO is belong to. We promote Western United States agricultural <laughs> products to the world, collaborating with 13 uh, Western United States. So this is gonna be, um, maybe we need a little bit more time. So if you have any question about USADA shows and HDOA trade shows, please um, check with Hideki and myself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yukashi. Now, if your product has at least 51% agriculture content from the US, from Hawaii or the US, right, Hideki? Going to be US mainland as well. At least 51% agriculture content. As soon as this program's over, make a beeline for Yukashi and Hideki. Get their business cards. Make sure you're on their mailing list. They have some fantastic programs that are not necessarily part of High Step, but you want to be aware of both trade shows, incoming matchmaking missions, as well as WUSADA's uh, fund match program. So definitely go say hi to them and, and get on their mailing list. And then our final partner for today, I'd like to introduce from the Patsy T. Mink Center for Business and Leadership, Ms. Terry Funakoshi. Terry. Last but not least, 
So we are so excited to be a partner this year in the High Step program. This is our first year participating. We are the only women's business center here in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we are uh, funded in part by the Small Business Administration and a program under YWCA Oahu. So our mission is to help women and men, about 20% men, um, succeed in their business. We help you start a business, grow a business, we provide leadership skills for your personal and professional growth. And we do this through innovative programs, workshops, free, free business counseling and free legal counseling. So it's really important, I know all of the businesses need some kind of legal advice you know, during your time. So we are I'm so proud to be a part of it and we are gonna be a resource for counseling when Joe um, gives us the uh, suggestions for your companies. So thank you very much and we're happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. All right, now we've reached the segment of the program where we're going to open it up to questions. So I'd like to invite uh, Jamie and Mark from DBED to come up here. Also, Rob Hack is going to join us here on the panel. And then Joe Burns, would you mind joining us as well in case there's questions about the intake? Come on down here uh, on the panel and if we have questions about that process. So we're opening it up to questions. Does anyone have questions about the program or eligibility, trade shows? Mentoring. Okay. Let me just come around with the mic here. Hi. Um, I was looking at possibly going to two countries on one trip. Um, one of them would be to Korea and one to Japan. I know to um, use the airfare benefits, I have to show six meetings. Is that correct? And does it have to be for both countries, or can it be? Three in Japan and three in Korea. Something. It should be for each trip. Yeah. Each, each trip. trip. Okay. Thank you. I need a microphone up there, Jamie, because I don't know if they can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Jamie, I'll, I'll just bring I the mic up. Mind so mind so mind the, mind. the question was about how many meetings are required in a country when you're traveling. And this is for, I mean, if you're traveling for a trade show, that's one thing. But if you're traveling to uh, have meetings with buyers or you know potential buyers, distributors, partners, whatever. Um, we do ask that you have a minimum of six meetings, and that's per per trip. Okay. The most efficient way to do that is on Korean Air, from here to Incheon to Tokyo Narita to to back to here, but buy it from Delta or some code share situation so you can get reimbursed. If you just buy it as Korean Air, you'll have a hard time getting reimbursed. It has to be a code share flight. Hawaiian Air also does some good things, but it's a little bit more tricky and um, complicated and expensive. Yeah. So as long as your ticket shows an American carrier, even like Rob City, when it's code shared, but it has to show that it's, it's ticketed through an American carrier, even if you're flying on a, um, a foreign carrier. Her, her question is, so she wants to go to Japan and Korea in the same trip. So could she visit, say, for example, three companies in Korea and three companies in Japan? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yes, she could do that if it's on the same trip. Uh, but just to kind of reiterate what we said is, you know, the RFP is competitive. And so one thing we'll actually be looking at is sort of the quality of those meetings and what the outcomes of those meetings uh, would be. Uh, the, the program is, is not, we have such limited funds, it's not an exploratory type uh, assistance program. We're sort of looking for actual concrete results coming out of those meetings. And that's kind of what you do in the application, is you're sort of showing the committee, because there is a review committee that will be looking at that, that you're going to have uh, tangible outcomes from those meetings. Any other questions? Yep. Um, the two hundred thousand revenue um, minimum for the high step assistance. Sorry. Oh, sorry. The the two thousand dollar um, minimum. The for the two hundred thousand. Sorry. Um, if we uh, are planning on meeting that goal or, or exceeding that goal this coming year, but we haven't quite made that goal this year, will we be not considered for the grant <coughs> or? I can't say. That. No. Um, the, 
the evaluation committee that sort of reviews the the proposals that come in as part of this RFP, um, you know, they have discretion and. So I don't think, you know, they just sort of draw a line and, oh, one, somebody's a dollar short of this. I think the reason that the $200,000 revenue minimum was put in there was just because uh, in previous years we had companies that had so little revenue and yet they wanted this assistance and there was no way that they were going to really make a big dent and it really increase their exports. So it's really, incumbent upon the applicant to show that with this money it'll help them you know get to sort of the next level or bring about you know for increased exports and that's what you're trying to show questions can I, I just have one thing um, Lyle reminded me so if um, Obviously, all of you found out about this event through some way, but if you want to make sure that you're getting our emails, please go to our website, invest.hawaii.gov, and on the right uh, side of the, the, the page, you can sign up for our uh, emails. So, just an idea of that. Oops. It's okay. okay. I've got a question over here. Mine was just a general Hi, comment. so I'm from Culture. We're an event app and we want to expand into foreign markets. So I wanted to know some of the best tactics for applying for this funding as a service, since so much of it is directed at tangible goods. We want to make sure that we can really make a case for ourselves. <clears throat> Oh, could you explain what you do? I'm sorry. Can you just give us a little more review of the business quickly? I'll turn it over to the boss here. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jonathan Mack. So uh, basically what Craigslist did for the classified ads, what Yelp did for the yellow pages, we're doing for the world's event calendar. So we aggregate the world's events into one database and we're a global app where you find out what's going on around you no matter where you are in the world. So our business model is acquiring users from different countries and different locations because they can find out what's going on. So we're exporting our technology to different markets. So we've launched it like in the Caribbean, uh, we've done small launches in Asia. And so for example, we went to the RISE Technology Conference in Hong Kong last year, well this year, but we applied for the grant, uh, but we, I think we were denied because it's hard to times we say we're not exporting goods, but we're exporting a service that is technology. So the question is, how do we provide a case for ourselves where we should have a providing value because we're a company based in Hawaii, technology built from Hawaii, uh, we're part of Blue Startups, Accelerate UH, et cetera, and we're part of the ecosystem, but and we want to export our services to the world. I can, I, I can answer that. Can use oh, use this? Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Um, first of all, if you were denied uh, previous, that it, it might not have to do with uh, not being eligible. I think last uh, year we were only able to fund half the companies that applied, uh, first of all. I think what advice I would give is if it's a technology, what you really want to show the evaluation committee is that yes, you have money coming in from uh, foreign entities, so that's like a, a, an export, but also that the work is being done here in Hawaii, either that you're employing programmers or things are taking place here in Hawaii. And I think if you sort of demonstrate that, then, you know, I, you know the committee then would, would sort of look at that in, you know, favorably. I think sometimes when we have t technology companies that have applied, it's just not clear sort of where the work is even is taking place and it, it's a little bit confusing. So it, we're not asking for a whole lot of, it's not like writing a grant, we were just asking for a couple of pages sort of in your export plan and your business plan. And I think if you just sort of show that clearly, um, that would help the committee. Did you want to? Well, I think that this is, might be a case where you take advantage of some of the um, partners that we have in our resources and maybe talking with um, um, SBDC or, a or HPEC um, and getting a little bit more input from um, them and their, take advantage of their their knowledge and their expertise. All right, I thought I saw another hand over here. Do we have any other question? Okay, here we go. I was gonna say that. Uh, what's the cost of the gold key service and how do we apply? That was a softball question for me. <laughs> the uh, gold key service is uh, 
If you're a small business and you have less than 500 employees, which I imagine most businesses in this room do, the cost is $950 per country. And that usually yields somewhere between three and 10 really high quality prospective partners, depending on the amount of interest in that market. So that's the gold key service. We also have a service that's kind of like a half gold key. That's called an initial market check. That's where we go out, contact prospective partners on your behalf, and then get, give you an assessment of the market interest. The second half is where we arrange the meetings for you. So that's a full gold key, and a half gold key is an initial market check. And that the cost for the initial market check, I believe, is just 350 So one thing you can do is you can do an initial market check, and if it comes back positive, we identify some good partners for you, you just pay the difference, and then it gets converted to a gold key service. Questions? I have two questions for our panelists, uh, first from Mark and Jamie. Can you give us any examples of success stories? Uh, you don't have to name the company, but maybe some companies that have leveraged the program in a really powerful way. Uh, so I'll give you a minute to think about that. And then Rob, could you just give us a preview of what the seminar schedule looks like? <laughs> Thank, thanks to Jamie for printing it out for me. Um, I, don't, I don't have a completely number right now. Export University will be January 11th. Um, and again, I should reiterate, uh, thanks to our partners here at FTZ9, all of the meetings will be in this fabulous room. Um, Export University 101, that's generally, we would consider that the uh, new to export companies, um, uh, Washington DC would call them NTEs, new to export, whereas companies who have already done a little bit of uh, marketing or, or even more than a little bit of exports overseas, those would be called market expansion or ME. So the new to export companies are the ones that we're trying to attract to um, the Export University 101. And in, in that uh, seminar, it's about a half a day. Um, we generally start everything at 9 a.m. promptly and we will have very broad brush approach to topics such as export finance, legal topics, marketing, a bit of e-commerce, uh, some cultural topics, uh, that sort of thing. So each module within that course is about 45 minutes or so, um, and we try to get it done by uh, 1 p.m. Then um, the rest of the, the uh, seminars that are on the schedule here are approximately two to two and a half hours. So in February we have marketing in Japan that's just very um, specific to Japan. I, I uh, do a lot of that content. Um, scaling up operations in e-commerce, as Jamie alluded to earlier, we're actually flipping those because of a um, scheduling conflict with some of the presenters. So e-commerce will be first. That's March 8th. Um, and again, it's obviously e-commerce with a focus on uh, doing things in Asia, but a lot of the things could be um, used for your just normal business. But we'll be talking about things, um, how to uh, translate your website, um, some very simple things that you're probably not aware of, how to even set up a, a, a telephone number in Japan or Korea or China very cheaply for, say, $5 a month that could ring to your office here in Hawaii. Just little tricks like that, but I think it's extremely useful um, for uh, the e-commerce activity. Then in April, we're having an intellectual property and trademarking event where um, we have somebody coming from Washington, D.C., who's an expert in the topic, but then we'll have some people from DCCA here uh, to help you with trademarking and how you can um, trademark your logos or your taglines or what have you. Um, in May 10th, we have um, trade shows with a, obviously a focus on international trade shows, how to prepare for a trade show, what to do while you're physically at the trade show, and then how to follow up with uh, people that you met at the trade show. There's some um, good tactics that we explain how to work on all of that. Then in June, 
we have the exporting of services. And again, um, this is the first time we're doing that event service focused. Um, it'll obviously have um, a little bit of uh, uh, bend towards architecture and engineering services and that sort of thing. But I think other companies who are not necessarily in those uh, businesses could still probably learn something from that. Then um, there's some events that we will surely have uh, that are not yet on the schedule, such as a country-specific event. Last year we did Canada and uh, Taiwan, and we almost always do an event annually on Japan, so I imagine that those will uh, come to fruition. And keep up with um, the DBAT website for um, all of those updates. Great, thanks, Robert. Oh. Jamie, do you share a few success stories or examples? Sure, um, and I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I, uh, we're kind of we'll looking around. We see some people here. that are here, <laughs> and um, one company I want to talk about is Sky Dreams, Angie Higa. Um, and I think, well, Angie's been, um, it, she's one of those companies that has utilized every part of the High Step program, so that's one of the things that I, um, I wanted to highlight she's she's been part of the training she's taken advantage of the business advising um, and one of the things I remember is when um, even this was a couple a uh, few years ago when uh, when you were part of business of exporting which was basically a, a very intensive um, uh, it was selective um, it's only nine I think it started with 11 and maybe went down to nine companies that went through this very intensive program geared towards not only just making sure that you had a solid business, but then going forward for with exporting. And we were talking about the Tokyo Gift Show and she knew at that point that she wasn't ready. She said, I'm not ready and I'm, I, I want to wait till I'm ready. And eventually she did go in and you've been in, in it three times, okay. So um, I, I think that's important because I think a lot of people are get a lot of companies get very excited about um, and that that's great excited about your product and the potential but perhaps you may jump in a little too early and might not realize that until you've gone to the show right. once so I think that that was a good thing about Angie she took advantage of the training and she sought out um, advice from from uh, the experts and she plotted that out and then she's also been a recipient of our company assistance yeah. she's still and, doing it yeah and, and also and <laughs> yeah she's still doing it. and also i just want to point out that's one reason why we also put the the two hundred thousand dollar revenue minimum in for the individual assistance program it's just a way for people mm -hmm. to realize that w when they'll be ready and we want to make sure that they actually have their own res enough of their own resources to be able to carry through with the export development plan and you know companies you know with fifty thousand dollars maybe with revenue probably need to be concentrating on sort of just growing their local market first a little bit to, to get to that point so I would just say that part of the benefit of doing an export marketing plan if you don't have one or tuning up your plan is that it'll give you a lot of insight into such critical things like pricing so recently we've been working with a company on their pricing because that's going to determine to a large extent your strategy for where you're going because if your product doesn't allow enough margin to be distributed by a distributor that might mean that perhaps it would be better for you to go direct to consumer through e-commerce for certain products. So all this kind of planning is going to be very, very valuable uh, for the people that are not exporting yet. And even for the ones that are, if they're looking at different products or different markets, it really makes a big difference uh, in terms of going to a show or spending money to promote your product and then not really having anything to show for it. Nobody wants to do it that way. So uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, one of our staff members, Lori Hiramatsu from our office is here. So please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and say hello to Lori. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Question here in the back. <coughs> Give me a Thank you for all you do. I've been to a couple other workshops and they've all been great. I just had one question. If you were going to finish the statement, I wish companies that are involved in High Step would, how would you finish that? 
Is there some kind of latent wish that you see <laughs> happening out there and you wanted to see? That's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I think on the RFP for the individual company assistance program, remember it. I, as I said, I use the word clunky. It's we, we don't have any statutory authority to give out grants for this. So what we have to do is we have to do it through an RFP process, <coughs> which means we have to s follow state procurement rules. Um, and what that means is you've got to really read the application very carefully. Sometimes you know, say right, right there that you, your company you're trying to prove this or, or this is what the committee is looking for, and um, and and we get applications that really are not sometimes not well thought out and then we feel bad having to then you know go back to companies and saying you know um, you, did, you didn't make it this time on this round because it is a competitive process so I would just say kind of think about what the committee is looking for what SBA is looking for in terms of metrics and things and then try to demonstrate that to the committee that yes you're at that stage where just with this little it's just incentive money what it really is it's not it's not an all expense paid whatever it's you know it's not that much money but it's enough to try to get you to do that extra trade show or that extra business trip to, to increase your exports and that's what we're kind of looking for on that did you have yeah I just want to add from my perspective I, I think I wish companies would leverage all the resources in the high step program so attend the seminars you'll learn something new I guarantee it go through the export mentoring process, you'll gain some insights on how to refine your export strategy and apply for the grant funds if you qualify. I think some companies get really excited about the grant funds and if they don't meet that $200,000 minimum, they go, well, I'm not interested in this program. But I think there's a lot of valuable resources and contacts in this room, in the seminars, and certainly the trade shows as well. Um, I don't believe the revenue requirement applies for the trade shows, is that right? So you can still participate in the pavilions program. I think companies should leverage all those resources. And having worked with exporters for many years, the number one variable in a company's success is their motivation. And when I see a company like Sky Dreams go in and leverage all the resources in the programs, come back year after year, they're going out there and they're finding success. So that's how I would answer that question. <coughs> All right, any other questions before we wrap up? Oh, I just wanted oh. to add to that. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up, John. I, I appreciate it because um, mm -hmm. like John mentioned, I think a lot of companies do focus just on the assistance part and we just really want you to see how valuable all, all the other elements, um, all the, the time and the talents of all these people here, all of our partners and all of their years of business and uh, intern, you know, global business expertise is, you know, you're getting a consultant for free, basically. I mean, you're not paying for business consulting. These people are giving out their time. So, and then also, um, when you participate in Hawaii Pavilions, um, it costs thousands and thousands of dollars, and that's primarily subsidized by the step monies. Um, you are required to put in a little bit of money, and you have to pay your, um, you know, hotel and, and, and airlines and so forth, but there's a lot of value in that. So just want to, um, just want people to, to realize that there is value throughout the program and just because you didn't um, get some assistance money, which as Mark pointed out, is lower this year. We have a, a little less this year, so it's gonna be more competitive. Just because you don't get it, please don't don't feel like um, you know it, a failure, first yeah. of all. Just, you know, please look at other other elements of the program that you can use for your, uh, for your company yeah. to, to grow. Yeah, and also just to add to that, uh, we're starting to try to use the word comprehensive in, in terms of like over the past number of years and in doing high step that we really are trying to make it a comprehensive program and really aimed at companies that aren't even exporting yet so they could get training think about it start looking at how uh, they could uh, put an export development plan into their sort of business plan so like in a couple of years from now that they may be able to do that and then all the way from companies that are already exporting, very experienced, but let's say they're going into a new market or they're having a specific <laughs> export challenge in a, in a country, then HPAC is gonna probably find somebody that knows a lot about that subject or that country and maybe and may be able to help you. And then all the types of companies in the middle. So we're, we're, we're trying to make it like a complete continuum uh, in terms of small assisting small businesses in, in Hawaii. 
can I use company assistance funds to apply for pavilions? Yes, Joe just asked the question, can you use the company assistance program to apply for Hawaii pavilions or for, I think Yukashi mentioned also, Department of Ag pavilions? Uh, yes. What we're looking for though in the application is sort of an overall export development plan for the next year. Like what are you going to be doing for the next year? It's it's not just a, a one-off kind of thing. We want to see a that you actually have a plan in place that you're executing on, and this money will help you to be able to do that. Great, thank you. The website behind us here all just disappeared. Um, is the website, uh, DBED's website, with all the information on the High Step program? I think it might. That's locked. Okay. Well, we need a password. Anyway, it's uh, invest.hawaii.gov forward slash exporting forward slash high step, I believe. And that website is continuously updated throughout the program year. So if we have any changes in dates for the seminars or new information come out, uh, definitely check that website. And then once the seminars are complete, that's where we post the links to the YouTube videos so that you can access those programs on demand. And we also live stream all of the seminars. So if you wanna participate in the seminar, but say you're on the North Shore and you really don't feel like battling the traffic, you can log in, participate live, send in questions that'll be answered by the speakers, or you can access it on YouTube afterwards when it's posted about a week later. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Please grab some coffee and pastries on the way out. I cannot eat all that in my, back in my office. And uh, please grab uh, all the partners' business cards, or if you have questions, please say hello. Thank you very much. <laughs>